Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today I'm going to go over some of the new features in Adobe Photoshop Elements 12. Now every year around September Adobe releases a new version of Photoshop Elements and this year it's 12. So many of you are asking is it worth the upgrade? Well let me go over some of the key features. First you'll notice that Adobe is more focused on the picture now and you can see that with the icon of the little aperture symbol that they have here. We're really focusing in on photographs. Now let's go over some of the enhancement that Adobe has added. The first one is the pet red eye reduction. Or actually it's more like the glow because pets don't necessarily have red eye. To explore this feature let's go to the red eye reduction tool and then look in our tool options and as you can see there's one that's called pet eye you can adjust the size of the radius of the pupil and you can adjust how much you want to darken it. Now I have this picture from Toby Otter. I'm using it using the Creative Commons Flickr licensing and I want to thank him for letting me use this picture of the demon dog. So right here if I click on the middle of the eye you can see that it adds a little bit of darkening to it but it doesn't really look realistic so I kind of give this one a B- minus because my experience with taking these photos of these pets they're usually very very bright and when you click on them it doesn't make it look that realistic so you would have to go into the expert mode and do a little bit of editing yourself so I'd only give this one a B minus. Now the next feature I want to cover is under the enhance menu and I want to thank Tommy Tomerton over at Flickr for letting me use this photo. If you go to the enhance there is a new one called auto smart tone. When you click on it it opens up a box and it's very much like a composite of the levels and the contrast button all in one. So if we go to the middle and we drag either towards the dark which is this one over here or you can drag to the more contrasty, you can drag towards the more light, or you can drag towards the midtones. Depending upon where you drag in this triangle is how it's going to automatically correct your tones for you. The next feature I want to explore is the Content Aware Move Tool. Now you may have noticed that the Cookie Cutter Tool is gone from your toolbar and in its place is the Content Aware Move Tool. I think many of you will like this Content Aware Move Tool. It allows you to move a person inside the photo without having to do a lot of cutting and pasting. So I want to thank Blue Violin One for letting me use this photo from the Creative Commons licensing. And what we're going to do with this is we are going to draw a circle around this biker right in the back. Once I've completed the circle, I'm going to grab in the middle and I'm going to move and Photoshop Elements is going to fill in the rest for me. So I thought that was a great new feature. Now it doesn't work for everything but it does a pretty good job of filling in where you've just moved from. The next set of enhancements is under the Quick Edits. We have three at the top, quick, guided, and expert, and most of the time we're an expert. But under the quick edits, Adobe has added the effects, textures, and frame tool. So now we can use Photoshop elements to get those effects that we normally associate with our smartphone. Let's take a look at them. The first one is the effects. There are some preset effects, and we can click on these preset effects if we want some sort of a washed out old color we can do that we can go over under the textures and we can kinda have that grungy chip paint effect then last but not least we can put this in a frame we can use the film frame effect and then we can export that out as a file and then share it on our social media the next enhancement that we have is not necessarily an addition but more like a workflow Whenever we have a photo that we're trying to restore, we can go to the guided edit now. And on the right hand side, you'll notice that there's one that says restore old photo. And as you can see, it's more of a workflow because the tools have always been there. We've had the crop tool, spot healing, healing brush, clone stamp blur to smooth out the imperfection. Now as you can see there is dust remover which is not something that's available in the normal expert toolbar. 
and then you're going to finish up with your standard enhancements. And that's it when it comes to restore old photos. The next enhancement that we have is the zoom burst effect. Now in order to show you that one, let me select cancel from this menu. We're going to go to the right. We're going to scroll down until we get to zoom burst effect. First you want to crop, then you want to add the zoom burst. Now you'll notice that the zoom burst effect is coming from the center and there is a way to correct that but we need to go back into the expert mode so I'm going to cancel this effect I'm going to go back to expert now I'm going to go to filter blur radial blur then I'm going to take the center of the radial blur and I'm going to move this to the left a bit I'm going to zoom it in a little bit more and select OK. Now as you can see in a minute that is what the zoom burst effect is using is your radial filter. So I'm going to edit, undo the radial blur, let's go back to guided edit and let me show you that it uses the same effect. Zoom burst effect, add zoom burst. And as you can see the zoom burst has moved to the left hand side. Now we want to add a focus area, so I'm going to click on the focus area and I'm going to drag in from the center of him out and this is going to clear up some area. In essence what this is doing is it's adding a layer mask to this. And lastly we're going to apply a vignette. And there we have it. We're done. The next enhancement that we have is still under the guided edit. If you go down towards the bottom, you can see that they've added a puzzle effect. If we click this button, you can select whether or not you want large or small puzzle pieces. I'm going to select medium. Once the puzzle pieces are added, we can select a puzzle piece or many puzzle pieces if we want. Click inside one of the puzzle pieces, hold down the shift key and you can add multiple puzzle pieces. Select extract piece and use the move tool to move these pieces. You can also spin them. When you're done, hit the return key. If by chance that you selected two puzzle pieces right next to each other, you may want to get rid of this line right here that's between the two puzzle pieces so that they have just a little bit of daylight inside them. With that, you're going to use the eraser tool. When you're happy, you can select Done. Let's look at another photo. I'll go into my photo bin, and I want to thank Sarah Ackerman for letting me use this photo with the Creative Commons Flickr licensing. So if we select our Straighten tool, then we go to our Tool Options, make sure that we have Rotate All Layers, and especially the Auto Fill Edges. Draw a straight line where the horizon is, and Photoshop will automatically fill in any of those areas rather than shrinking your picture. The next enhancement is one that everyone has been wanting for a while and that is an easy way to open files in Adobe Camera Raw from the menu rather than having to go through a convoluted way of opening them. So from the file menu now we have file, we have an option open in Camera Raw. When you do that, it automatically opens in Camera Raw. In addition to that, you can open multiple photos in Adobe Camera Raw now. With these new features and enhancement, Adobe did have to get rid of a couple options. One was the cookie cutter tool, which no one really seemed to use. And the next thing is the Magic Extractor. Under the image menu, Adobe has removed the Magic Extractor because they're moving to a 64-bit program and the Magic Extractor was a 32-bit feature. Finally, the last enhancement to the actual Photoshop Elements Editor is the ability to share to Twitter. That is one of the options that was added to the share button. The next enhancements came in the form of the organizer. In the organizer, Adobe has added people places and events to the tags whereas version 11 only had keywords. 
And last but not least, the organizer can now sort by name as well as newest to oldest. In the left-hand column, we can add Adobe Ravel, which allows us to share our photos in between our PC or Mac and our smartphone. So I return to my question, should I upgrade to version 12? To me, there's really not enough in this version to justify the price of an upgrade because many of the things can be accomplished through the expert mode of Photoshop elements. Puzzles, zoom burst, and the workflow that is the new restore photo. A lot of these things just don't bring enough to this version to make it worthwhile. Now if you have an old version like 8 that doesn't have layer masking or some of the other new features, then it's definitely worth the upgrade. But if you're at 11, it's not a really compelling upgrade unless you want to do a lot of sharing between your mobile albums. This is Chucky from Digital Goulash. I hope you enjoyed that review of the new features in Adobe Photoshop Elements 12.